Good morning. So today, we will be discussing the last competency for the school year in mathematics grade 9. We are going to solve problems that involves oblique triangles. So again, in oblique triangles, we use only either the law of sines or the law of cosines. Now let us begin with problem number 1. A man measured the angle of elevation of the top of the tower to be 70 degrees. When he walked 30 meters further, the angle of elevation of the tower of the top of the tower is 35 degrees. Find the distance from the top of the tower to the second observation point. So we have two observation points. The first one is that the angle of elevation is 70 degrees. And then the man walked 30 meters farther, the angle of elevation becomes 35 degrees. Pero ang tinatanong is the distance from the top of the tower to the second observation point. If we are going to illustrate our problem. Suppose this is our tower ano, and this is the first observation point na andito yung man. It says that in the first observation point, the angle of elevation is actually 70 degrees. This is 70 degrees. And then sabi, the man walked 30 meters further, naglakad yung tao ng 30 meters papalayo. And from that second observation point, from this second observation point, the angle of elevation becomes 35 degrees. Ang tinatanong is the distance from the top of the tower to the second observation point. So this is the unknown here. This is the unknown. This one is our X. Okay, looking at this, as you can see naman, we have here an oblique triangle. So, meron tayong oblique triangles here. Ano, you can use either of the law here. It's either you use law of sine or you use law of cosine. But let us try to use law of sine for this case. Ano, gamitin natin ay law of sine. If we will be using law of sine, we have here, gagamitin natin ang law of sine. So, ang nawawala is x. Over sine, the opposite of side x is this angle. Suppose this is our theta. That is our theta. Opposite of side s is theta. So we have sine theta is equal to the other given side is this one. This the other given side is 30 meters. So let's have 30 over sine opposite the 30 meters. So this is our 30 meters. That is the opposite angle. Now let us write this angle to be beta, the opposite of our 30 meters. So let's have 30 over sine beta. We need to get the value of our angle theta. If we are going to get the value of the angle theta, what will be the value? Yes, you are going to use the 70 degrees here. Ano, 70 degrees and our theta is actually a linear pair because they form a straight line. So since they are linear pair, for us to get the theta, that at is as simple as 180 minus yung ating angle here, which is 70, which tell us that our theta is actually 110 degrees. So, 110 degrees. This is 110 degrees. Ang tanong, paano naman natin kukunin ang ating beta? Of course, ang ating triangle is an oblique triangle. Ano? So, kung may theta na tayo, 110, tapos yung angle dito is 35, madali na nating makukuha yung beta. Knowing again that the sum of the interior angle is equal to 180 degrees. So, we are just going to subtract from 180 yung dalawang measure ng angle. The given angle is 35 at yung theta na nakuha natin is 100. And if we are going to subtract 180 minus 35 minus 110, beta is actually 35 degrees. So, meron na tayong theta, meron na tayong beta, pwede na natin gamitin yung ating equation here, yung law of sine. Pag ginamit natin yung law of sine, then isa substitute natin, x over sine, our theta is 110, and then 30 over sine, ang beta natin is 35. Then cross multiplication, x sine 35 is equal to 30 sine 110. Ang hinahanap natin ay x, so we are going to use MPE. So magkakaroon tayo ng 30 
30 sine 110 over sine 35. And then you can write it in your calculator to get the value. If you do that, here is our value. So we have 30 sine 110 over sine 35. And as you can see here, this is the value, which means that x is equal to 49.15. Ano? What is this 49.15? This is the distance from the top of the tower to the second observation point. And our unit is actually meters. So this is 49.15 meters. The distance from the top of the tower to the second observation point. Now let us have our problem number two. So we have here two trains. Two trains leave the same station at 11 a.m. and travel in straight lines at speed of 44 kilometers per hour and 66 kilometers per hour. If the difference in their direction is 125 degrees, how far apart are they at 11.20 a.m.? So I am going to repeat the problem. Two trains leave the same station at 11 a.m. and travel in straight lines at speed of 54 kilometers per hour and 66 kilometers per hour. If the difference in their direction is 125 degrees, how far apart are they at 11.20 a.m.? Now let us draw or illustrate our problem. If this is the starting point, in the train station, yung dalawang train daw ay nag-travel in a straight line and the difference in their direction is 125 degrees. So if our train number 1 travels here and our train number 2 travels in this direction, sabi the difference in their direction is 125 degrees. Which means, eto yung difference ng kanilang direction. Ano, this daw is 125 degrees. Now, ang tinatanong is, how far apart are they at 11.20 a.m.? So, this is the distance between the two after 20 minutes of traveling. So, ito yung nawawala, which is x. Ang given natin is actually the speed. The speed of our train number 1 is 54 kilometers per hour. And uh, the speed of our train number 2 is 66 kilometers per hour. Now, we have to get, of course, the distance that they traveled in 20 minutes kasi umalis sila sa station ng 11 a.m. Ang tinatanong is how far apart are they at 11.20 a.m.? If our trains travel in this speed, 54 and 66 kilometers per hour, the next thing that we have to answer is how much or how far are they from the starting point in the train? Gaano na bang kahaba yung natatravel nila? If that is if they travel for 20 minutes. Take note, they travel only for 20 minutes. Gaano na silang kalayo? Take note that in 20 minutes is actually equivalent to one-third of an hour. Since there are 60 minutes in an hour, so yung 20 minutes natin is equivalent to one-third of an hour. The question is, how are we going to get the distance if we know the speed? So if the speed is 54 kilometers per hour, ano na yung kanyang distance in 20 minutes? Since yung 20 minutes natin is one-third of an hour, ano ang gagawin natin? Yes, we are just going to get one-third of 54 and 66. Yung train number one natin, 54 kilometers per hour. We are just going to get the one-third of 54 because again, one-third yung 20 minutes. Ano? And one-third of 54 kilometers is actually 18 kilometers. So itong ating unang side na ito is actually 18 kilometers. At yung pangalawa, that is 66, we are going to get one-third of 66, that is equal to 22 kilometers. So itong ating isang side na ito is actually 22 kilometers. Now you look at here, ano ba ang given natin sa ating illustration for us to identify kung ano ang gagamitin natin? We have here the angle. Ano? At yung given natin are the two sides, 18 and 22. So we have two sides and an angle. So we have two sides and then an angle. So we have S, A, S. So if we have S, A, S, ano ang gagamitin natin? 
Yes, if it is SAS, then we are going to use law of cosines. Again, ang ating figure dito ay nagpapakita ng SAS case. And based on what we have discussed, if you have an SAS case, then you are going to use law of you are going to use law of cosines. So, law of cosines ang gagamitin natin. This is our unknown. We have x here. So, ang ating equation will be x squared. We have x squared is equal to the other two sides are 18 and 22. So, we have 18 squared plus 22 squared minus twice the two sides here twice 18 times 22. And then cosine, the angle opposite the unknown x. Ayan ang ating opposite angle. So we have cosine 125. I hope you can still follow. So again, to solve for x, since we have here an exponent of 2, so for us to get x, we need to get the square root of the entire x expression. We have 18 squared, i -re -re -right lang natin, 22 squared minus 2 times 18 times 22, and then we have cosine 125. Based from our previous discussion, sabi natin, pwede nyong kunin isa-isa yung value nitong mga to. But then again, if you have your calculator, pwede namang pindutin na itong buong expression sa inyong calculator. And if you do that, you look at our upper right, Andiyan ang ating nilagay. If you have the square root of 18 squared plus 22 squared minus 2 times 18 times 22 cosine 125. As you can see here, the answer is 35.53. So our answer, our answer here is 35.53. What is this 35.53? It answered the question, how far apart are they at 11.20? So at 11.20, the two trains are actually 35.53. Our unit is kilometers away from each other. Okay, they are 35.53 kilometers apart. That is how are you going to answer our second problem. Now, let us proceed with our last problem for today. So, the last problem is this. We have here a triangular parcel of land with points MKL was to be fenced. No data for the lengths of sides MK and KL are available as shown in the figure. So, this is our figure. How much fencing material is to be used in the land? So, this is the triangular parcel of land, the points M, K, and L. These are the data given sa land, ano, but you are asked to find the um, fencing material that is to be used for the lot. So, pag tinatanong is the fencing materials, it means ano yung hahanapin natin? Yes, it means na ang gagamitin natin actually is the perimeter. Ang hahanapin natin is the perimeter of the lot. And if we are going to get the perimeter, pag kinuha natin ang perimeter, perimeter, we are just going to add all the sides. Given na yung ating first side, which is ML. So we are going to add all the sides. The sides aside from ML is of course, meron tayong KL, this one. And then the last side will be our side MK. So we are just going to add all the sides. We have the ML, KL, and then we have the MK. But the problem here is, we do not have the measure for the KL and we do not have the measure for the KMA. So, ang gagamitin lang natin or ang we need to get this two para makuha natin yung perimeter. Now, looking at our figure here, we have the two angles here, angle M and angle K. Given also is the side ML. So, kung titingnan natin, we have two angles and two angles and a non-included side. This case is actually SAA case. Two angle and a non-included side. Therefore, if this is SAA case, we are going to use here what law? 
Yes, we are going to use here the law of sines. So, yun ang gagamitin natin for us to get this one. Now, meron na tayong ML, kunin natin yung KL. So, if I have here KL, we have the sides. We have here sine. We are going to use law of sine. So, KL over sine. This is our KL. So, eto yung KL natin. Ano? Now, what is the opposite angle of our KL? Obviously, this is the opposite angle. So, we have KL over sine, the opposite angle. Angle is 52. So, we have KL over sine 52. Is equal to, eto, given naman yung ating sides, we have here 150 over sine. And if you are going to look at here, kung eto yung 150 natin, its opposite angle is the 80 degree angle. So, we have 150 over we have 150 over sine. The opposite angle is 80 so basically, using law of sines, this should be our equation. And you are just going to use cross multiplication here. So we have KL sine 83 is equal to 150 sine 52. And then for us to get KL, you are going to use MPE. And the resulting equation is 150 sine 52 over we have here sine 83 and then you are going to use your calculator to find the value if you are going to put it in our calculator we have 150 sine 52 over sine 83 obviously this is the result ano? so if we are going to round it off to the nearest hundreds it means our KL is actually 119.09. Of course, this one is meters. So, meron na tayong KL. So, ang kukunin na lang natin is MK. Using again the law of sines, we have MK over sine. If you are going to look at here, ano, kung titingnan natin, ito ang ating MK, ano, this is the opposite angle. Now, what is the measure of this angle? Ano ang measure ng ating angle L? Yes, our angle L is actually is actually 45 degrees. So we have sine 45. Ang tanong paano natin nakuha ang 45? Ito yung nawawala, L. So we have L, the angle L. You are just going to subtract from 180 the measures of angle M and angle K. So we have 180 minus 52 minus 83. It will give us 45. That's why the opposite we have here the opposite of MK. The angle is actually 45. So we have MK over sine 45 is equal to, gamitin na rin natin yung given, which is 150 over sine 83. And then cross multiplication, MK sine 83 is equal to 150 sine 45. MK ang hahanapin natin. So, we use MPE. So, magkakaroon tayo ng 150 sine 45 over sine 83. And the calculator will do the work for us. If we are going to press it in our calculator, 150 sine 45 divided by sine 83. As you can see here, our value or our value is 106, 106 point 86 meters. Now, ang tinatanong is how much fencing material. So, we are looking for the perimeter. So, para makuha natin ng perimeter, again, to get the perimeter, you are just going to add all the sides. Given ang ating ML here, that is 150 plus ang ating KL is here, that is 119.09 Plus, ang ating MK is this one. We have 106.86. And if you are going to add everything here, the answer will be 375.95. And this 375.95 meters is the materials that you are going to use to fence our triangular parcel of land. I hope you get it. So this is how are you going to answer problems that involves oblique triangles. You are just going to use either the law of sines or the law of cosines. So this is all about the mathematics grade 9. I hope you understand. Thank you for watching.